month, Eleanor Perry Smith. I have two disclaimers. The first is that I got my first cold of 2018 on Wednesday, so if I sound pathetic, that's the only reason. Thank you, RJ. Yeah. The second is that uh, I'm not a morning person, I never have been. But I'm uh, having our daughter next month, so that's all about to change. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, thanks for having me. Thanks for taking the time to come out. And um, thanks to RJ, Nicole, Lauren, everybody, Amy, who uh, put this together. This is, this is fun to talk about. Honesty is actually really close to my heart. So real quick, when you came in, there was uh, on your name tag, you circled either truth or dare. And that's not for nothing. <laughs> so briefly, if you circled truth, I want you to turn to someone near you and tell them out loud what animal or insect you fear most. Go. I love how excited everybody is. You're not in danger if you get right. Okay, dare people. Dare. Dare people. You got you? Okay, now if you think dare for five seconds. I want you to act like the animal or insect you fear most. And I'll count. Ready? Five. Act, do it, go. I dare you. When's the last time you played truth or dare? I mean, I love that game. I was always a dare person. But now I'm a truth person, even though truth is for cowards. So. Dishonesty, there's honesty, but dishonesty thrives in the animal kingdom. Older chipmunks will often raid the food stores of younger chipmunks when they're away from their little hole in the ground. Some cuckoo bird species are brood parasites, which means that they'll lay their eggs in other birds' nests to avoid having to raise their young themselves. This works, even when the young cuckoo is quite conspicuous. <laughs> <laughs> so, dishonesty is a natural behavior. It is innate in living things to shroud and manipulate in order for personal gain and preservation. That makes honesty supernatural. It's something humans teach and exercise through elevated consciousness. It's something we can identify and choose. Honesty makes us even more sentient than animals. It elevates our relationships and our understanding of ourselves. And unlike animals, we can practice honesty twofold, with actions and with words. So this is where I come in. <laughs> I regularly practice honesty in order to connect with people through my poetry. Oddly, honesty is one quality which we esteem most in civilization, yet we neglect the power of exploring its depth. And I'm not saying we're mostly liars. I'm simply pointing out that honesty is largely an inward practice that requires transcendence above an external narrative in order to reach its full potential. The success of my creativity is largely due to exploring honesty within myself and my experience and conveying that to an audience. <laughs> That's a good ring. <laughs> to my surprise and delight, Honesty has carried my art further than all of my previous writing combined. I'll briefly tell you how I became a poet, and then I'll explicate the six tenets that form the backbone of my honesty practice. So, I was a courageous and compassionate kid. And I like to dress like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> my parents gave me the gift of a happy childhood and equipped me with the discernment for discovering truth. My dad was my best bud. When we went on long walks or drives, he'd recite poetry from memory, and it was pure magic to me. Like many others, though, my happy childhood halted when I got to middle school. Depression entered, de I mean, look at that. Depression entered my life. <laughs> look at the eyeliner. Um, I had toxic friendships, and I learned how to lie, cheat, and steal. Fortunately, that's also when I began to write verse. Journals became the place to locate myself, 
And so I battled the world each day, then retreated into poetry each night when I got home. I often wrote and shared my work, but I only shared it with very few people. And I did this for 20 years. I studied poetry as an undergrad, but I did the same thing professionally and became a journalist writing about art and design. In writing articles, I get to present ideas while remaining personally shrouded. Still, I wrote poetry and I wondered if I'd ever share it with the public. Then, in 2015, I was invited by local design collective The Maid Shop, some of who are here today, to an informal gathering of um, creative people to share our works in progress, regardless of their professional status. It was just completely off the cuff and formal, really fun. Um, and at that point, it felt painfully dishonest to my creative spirit to conceal my poetry any longer, and so I shared it with that group. And their response was wildly supportive. Right away, people wanted to collaborate with me from that gathering. So I began to make videos and open shows for musicians around Denver. And from that small exposure, Exactly one year later, I was invited to recite at TEDx Mile High for more than 2,000 people to Ellie Calkins. And one year after that, I found myself reciting at a 20,000 person festival in Wisconsin along with artists like John Prine and Wilco and my boy, Paul Simon. <laughs> so, um, I credit most of this momentum to the power of raw perspective. Simple linguistic honesty has turned my hermetic practice into a public career. And I found that honesty does not result in loss, but in perpetual increase. So now I'll share with you the six tenets that construct my anatomy of honesty. The first is simplicity. You've likely realized that simplicity is not synonymous with ease. Simplicity requires focus and refinement, a distillation to the essential. In order to arrive at honesty, one must reveal their personal myths. You must navigate through mental and emotional miasma in order to recognize the cause of your actions, the root of your words. As a result, it took me 10 years to complete the poem I'm about to share with you. After several false starts, it took me that long to arrive at the simplicity of my experience. You know, the thing about this poem was that for a long time I thought it was a monument to resentment. But the more I sat with it and the more time went on, I whittled down the simplicity to gratitude. And it's about a transcendent friendship that I used to have, but I don't have any more except in this poem, and it's called Reverie, that's all. Daydream when I was sinking in the echo of the hall. My family still was sleeping when I rose the evening call. Plate made in the morning to call my inner Paul. These oranges gave their lives for me. It's beautiful, that's all. Glowing in the oven full of flour mix too sweet. The simple skins of broken sheep stretched across my feet. And surveying the summer perched top of city wall. Skin nineties and drink forties. It's beautiful, that's all. Tracing out our shadows in creekside reverie. Wishes all too common stretched across these common streets. As always, when you taught me, I pretended not to learn. Slouching in your doorway as the faucet water burned. Your soap was a commandment, your towel was a reprieve. Your handwriting was holy and your bed needed new sheets. Suck my hook before you as you rode the southwest cheek. Trains still have romantic names, despite their dying breed. Of all the ill basements dug after the fall, your suited our estrangement. It's beautiful, that's all. use their work as escapism, I use mine for erosion. 
Paradoxically, the more I uproot my psychic foundation with truth, the more solid it becomes. I'm in the habit of asking myself what my discomfort indicates. On a practical level, I've found it helpful to accept the discomfort of my writing routine. It would be so calming to have set hours, but I've learned that when I try and force poetry, it's total garbage. I can control the structure of an article, but I cannot wrangle the visitation of poetic inspiration, and so I don't. Because if I'm not wholly invested in a poem, then its sincerity diminishes, and so does its impact. When I recite, I don't have an instrument up there when I'm not feeling it to back me up. So I must ensure that honesty is always present. And I can only do that by believing in every poem I write. And I can only believe in it if I've accepted its message through and through. Acceptance can only be achieved by involving the next tenet of honesty, which is bravery. It means accepting responsibility for the impact of our actions and the weight of our words. But it does get more natural through practice. Part of the reason it took me 20 years to share my poetry um, with people outside of friends and family is because I felt isolated in the way I wanted to recite. I'm not a slam poet, I'm not a beat poet, I'm not an academic poet, and so my inability to find belonging uh, made me apprehensive about sharing it. But fear isolates us, bravery connects us. Honesty was my battle cry. I've been inspired by the honesty I've seen in others, and it made me want to do the same regardless of identity or consequence. The next poem is the first one I wrote with a specific intention to recite it melodically without any music. It has everything to do with the bravery that arises from acceptance. Also Peter Pan. It's called Battalion. You could see me coming second star at the right with a set of powder pistols and a typical set of knives. The battle must have found me far before my time. But I picked up all my weapons and began to fight and spite. The first thing to elude me was the gift of flight. Though all that was required was a bit of the light, so I ducked into the forest to assemble some allies. And all around it all was a couple of lost boys. Now I'm no one to grumble nor accuse any fraud. If the black and red wheels spun, I got what I got. A lot of the sinking sand was in swamps that I sought. Although a lot of it looked sturdy and beneath was the rot. I got so talented maneuvering from rock to rock. Forgot the reason for getting stuck was learning to dislodge. I saw miles and miles of innumerable bobs and thought, I'll just submerge. And swim till I drop my god. I've chucked some pearls through rocks as well. I guess you could say that I've been through hell. Well, hell's a culmination of a thousand fires. My retaliation's a battalion of waters. The water that cleanses, the water that drowns, the water that surrenders. Of it wears the crown, I found that I'm a conqueror, but I am not a queen. It works out pretty well, I never wanted to be. I'm content with just my dagger, I'm pleased with my soul. I'm fit to wear this leather, because it never grows old. Told that less is such a blessing, you can smile in bed. With the palm in your palm and the words in your head. Instead of flashing my teeth for what I don't want to be, I'll collect my companions because I'm bringing them with me to see what I want to see and say what I'll say. If I do it well enough, I'm convinced that one day I'll wait to see my face in the water below. Water on the deep, not a drop of it shallow. The sea called out to me that subterranean flow where I dove deep enough to retrieve my own shadow. The darkness in me and the light that I have I reconciled at last and given me the last laugh. Oh man, I am not a vision or a version or a song. I'm just a bedtime story and the story goes on. My God, I choked some pearls through rocks as well. Guess you could say that I've been through hell well. If hell's a culmination of a thousand fires, my retaliation is a battalion of waters. contradicting accounts of a single crime. The film gave rise to the term Rashomon effect, which is when multiple incongruent testimonies surround a single event. 
If you want to practice honesty, then it's wise to remember that truth is not just a portrait, but a landscape. It's imperative to see that the story you've been telling yourself about yourself and about others is an incomplete picture. When we realize that our narrow vision is a natural fact and not always a personal flaw, then we can detach from guilt and live with open eyes that are less prone to injury. <laughs> <laughs> Just do like googly eyes on things, people. It's really fun. <laughs> so you don't learn from being correct in your expectations, but by calmly observing the outcome. If you're thinking, Eleanor, I already know everything you're telling me about honesty. Awesome. Now this is where our earlier truth or dare practice comes back into frame. If you really want to grow, then I dare you to couple your honesty with compassion for the person in front of you. Compassion is a victory of perspective, which also takes us into the territory of vulnerability. So I practice Wing Chun Kung Fu, and one thing we have which I love is that it doesn't matter who you're up against because nobody has big muscles in their face. <laughs> Vulnerability is a human condition. Weakness is universal, but it doesn't have to be pitiful. Especially if you acknowledge its presence. Many of you know there's an advertising technique of proudly displaying the weakness in your product. If you want people to like you and to trust you, then tell them the vulnerable truth. Without neglecting tact, of course. I feel fortunate to be living in a time and place where people are vocalizing their vulnerabilities in mass. This uh, last poem I'm going to share with you, I wrote specifically for the attendees of this year's Eau Claire Festival, who are either facing opposition to their dreams or are in the process of voicing their traumatic vulnerabilities. I wrote it with a good friend in mind, as well as the sister of another close friend. Today I dedicate it to anyone who needs to hear these words right now. It's called Old Dominion. In the stale and tuckered outpost where we set our troubled stage, I was winded with ambition. You were clothed in restless age. And while we both knew that the answer to our riddles was the same, we departed dust and lightning, reaching for the brassy ring. And all the while, for a while, all we wanted was to seem. And all we reached for was a vapor as we gathered smoke screens. And all we hunted were mirages, all we captured was the mist. Reveled in a grand delusion, all we brought home was a wish. And in between cemented winters, I heard the sneer of cruelty. And so I gathered all my splinters and built a lamp by which to read. In the velvet light before me, there's a brains that I can see. All it says is, I believe you, I believe you, I believe. And when you say that you were misled, and when you wailed that you were robbed, and when they took your amber body and burned it to their wretched gods, and when you know that you've been battered in a way that no one sees, it's not the skin that bears the lashing, the spirit carries that disease. When you lament there is no onward because the backward had their way. And when you tell me there's no justice because the judges too were paid. And when you whisper that someday you'll critical your own decree. Oh, by the lamp light, I believe you, I believe you, I believe. Unless we fall, get all our saviors, let us buckle down and bleed. Be not bonded. Our vain steers the impulse of divinity. And in the velvet light before me, saw us rise above our feet. And we are nourished by the nectar of belief, dear of belief. And I don't know, there is a place in which.
bridge will settle into peace. Since I searched the crowded streets and found the pain is each to each. All I know is there's a vestige of a blazing paradise. I can feel it in my backbone, see it right behind my eyes. So when we're tired from all our wanders and when the sky becomes a ground, we'll congregate and get a pizza and get drunk on what's around. And in the velvet light before us, there's a friend I can see. All it is, is I believe you. I believe you. I believe. challenging work we've done in the practice of honesty, we at last arrive at the rewards of liberty. Freedom from mental defeat. We gain the ability to freely express and connect. As I said before, honesty is a force of increase. I've seen it rapidly fortify my emotions, relationships, and artistry. Bless you. Any lack of honesty has damaged my happiness and productivity. All of my creative breakthroughs have come when I intentionally navigated these six tenets. They have not failed me, they will not fail you. So, dare to practice honesty. Dare to speak truth. Dare to be truth. Thank you.